Welcome. You are already familiar with the general concept of a function. A function can be seen as a machine that transforms an input to an output. For example, the function square takes the input 3 to the output 9. Recall that a set of possible inputs is called the domain of the function, whereas the outputs should be elements of the codomain. In the example square, both domain and codomain are equal to the set of real numbers. More generally, you can also take vectors as inputs and outputs. For example, you can look at the function f from r2 to r3, which maps the vector xy to x squared plus y squared, x minus y, x squared. In this case, the domain is r2 and the codomain is r3. In the context of systems of linear equations, we considered the important questions are there solutions to this system? And how many solutions are there? We can now ask the same questions for an equation of the form f of x equals b. For example, we can consider whether there are solutions to the equation f of x, y equals minus 1, 3, 2. For the function from before, we see that there are no solutions since the first coordinate of the outcome equals x squared plus y squared, which is always greater or equal than zero. On the other hand, for the equation f of x, y equals zero, 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 we see that there is a unique solution, zero, zero. Since x squared plus y squared is only equal to zero if both x and y are zero. Finally, the equation f of x, y equals 2, 0, 1 has the solutions 1, 1 and minus 1, minus 1, as you can check. The range of a function is a set of all possible outcomes of that function. This is a subset of the codomain. And as we just saw, it does not have to be the entire codomain. Minus 1, 3, 2 was not in the range of f. If the range of a function covers the whole codomain, we say that the function is onto or surjective. Thus a function f is onto if the equation f of x equals b has a solution for all possible vectors b in the codomain. And our example is not onto because there is no solution to f of x equals minus 1, 3, 2. If there is a solution, the next question is if it is unique. If the solution to f of x equals b is unique for all vectors b in the range, then we say f is one-to-one -one or injective. Notice that our example is also not injective because there were two solutions to f of x equals two, zero, one. Now let us get back to linear algebra. You can rewrite a system of linear equations as the matrix equation a times x equals b. The part a times x can be seen as the outcome of a function on vectors. Indeed, we can consider the function t of x equals a times x, which sends the input x to the output a times x. A function that can be written in this way is called a matrix transformation. The example on the slide is a transformation which maps vectors in R3 to vectors in R2. For this function, we can now ask the questions whether it is onto and whether it is one to one. The question if the matrix transformation is onto is the same as asking whether t of x equals b has a solution for all possible b. That is, whether the matrix equation a times x equals b always has a solution. In this case, you see that this is true, as the augmented matrix is already in echelon form. Every row has a pivot, 
so the system can never become inconsistent, regardless of what the b, the right hand side of the equation, is. Thus t is an onto function. We also see that there is a free variable. The third column does not contain a pivot. Thus, there is not just one solution, there are infinitely many solutions to the equation a times x equals b. This means that the function t is not injective. Now you know that linear systems either have zero, one, or infinitely many solutions. Since our matrix transformation t is not injective, it has infinitely many solutions to the equation t of x equals b for any b in the range of t. Let us now try to visualize some of the matrix transformations we can make. Consider, for example, the matrix 2, 0, 0, 2. This maps a vector v to twice v. Thus, it gives an expansion by a factor 2. On the slide, we have applied the matrix transformation t of x equals a times x to each point of the picture of the house. You see that by doing so, the picture of the house is stretched by a factor 2. The matrix 2, 0, 0, 1 maps x, y to 2x, y, so it only stretches in the x direction. If we consider minus 1, 0, 0, 1, we map x, y to minus x, y. We reflect the vector in the y-axis, so we get a mirror image of the house. We can create many more functions by using different matrices. In class, we will study what kind of transformations can be expressed as matrix transformations, and how you can find the associated matrix A if you have such a transformation. Could a rota rotation over 90 degrees, like this, be a matrix transformation, and what would be its matrix? Come to class to find out.